Thank you, Quick Shot. I mean, that game looked good for Fnatic to start at least, but unfortunately did not fall in their favor. So let's break it down a little bit here. Uh, I, I wasn't a big fan of their uh, picks and bans here. I think that, that when they picked up Zed Casio, they should have held off on the Zed pick, picked the Casio, and perhaps taken away the Alistair. Uh, disallowed for some of SKT's um, disengage on that team, right? I don't think that they needed to pile on the Leona. Well, what they tried to do is they tried to enforce a lane swap because there's no way if Huni picks up Cassiopeia that you are not lane swapping against him and trying to punish him for that pickup. We've been criticizing teams for going into the 1v1 and that covers some of Steelback's weakness. So I actually like that part of it, but I agree with you. The Alistair was the bit that I thought it would have been a little bit better than the Leona. And of course, also in the early game, uh, we saw Febivin making some sweet plays. We have a tweet from at Lady Lil Talon who writes, and Febivin will tell his children about the day he 1v1 Faker and walked away with the god dead at his feet. And here's a listen in of Febivin calling it in picks and bands. By the way, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna solo kill this guy, okay? okay. If you ward for me, I can play aggressive. I can just jump on him 20 for seven, and then he's dead. dead. Same. The visits into the jungle not as fruitful. And there's the death mark coming in. And will it be enough? The pop and the ignites. Aggressive pick making team. Faker eats two shurikens. The knockup is interrupted as Febivin materializes. Ignites Ooh. plus one more. That is two one v ones in a game. I'm loving the confidence there. Really knowing the limits of what he can do on the champion, regardless of who's playing. And that's really a trait that a lot of rookies seem to have. Like, they don't care who they're playing against. They just see champion, champion. They know what they can do. Those EU mid laners I can just <laughs> throw in there. Oh, yeah, that's boy. what the lane swap does. As soon as you get that lane swap in there, they had to swap it. You isolate mid lane. And he said, just ward out for me. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Well, that's the, you know, it was wonderfully er played in the early game. The problem is they were not able to convert this into a victory. So even with the solo kills in the mid lane and the early lead that they got, Fnatic not able to convert it, and that's where I have to wonder whether or not the team comp that they drafted allowed them to uh, to push around the map they, uh, the way they needed to. I feel like after killing the god twice, the heavyweights were off, and he started to actually perform really well. And the team fights that there was a particular team fight around the dragon area where Febbermon was. We Around see 17. SKT on the monitor right now, but speaking to this replay that you are regarding, Sheepy, we're going to pull that up on your screen, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll let you break that down for us. Yeah. I... Here it is. Um, that was actually really impressive by Faker. So Faker getting 1v1 twice, and I think this was the wrath from him. He's seeing, um, if we roll the clip, just how great Faker is actually negating any kind of pressure from Febbevin, who's level 17, three levels up here. And Febbevin comes from the side, level 16. He blocks it instantly, shoves him away, Q, W, auto attack, and then there's real ultimate to finish off. Febbevin did nothing this team fight, and incredible play by Faker. The I was thing really that really impressed. confused me about that team fight is that you have a Cassiopeia and you have the Gragas flashing in. We saw it at the start of the team fight, as well as the Leona flanking from behind. They tried to come from all these different angles. The number one rule at Ca for Cassiopeia is sit on top of your AD carry, let them come to you. They had already aggroed the dragon. I think this really showcases the differences in the team compositions and how Fnatic misplayed that when you have a team comp that can be really strong in the four on four, the Cassiopeia is not a split pusher. She's a team fighter. Leona, Sivir, and Gragas do the same thing. You cannot look for these 5v5s if you don't have vision denial. You saw Zed walking through a mile of war is going into that. Faker, you know, he's a veteran. He knows the path that Zed has to take, instantly blocks it. And what Fnatic should have done is just leave Zed split pushing, keep him away from the team fights, and then get advantages that way. I 100% agree. And this is why I want to go back to the point that I was trying to make earlier, which is that when they picked up the Zed Casio, I would have picked up Casio Alistair. Pick it away, play the disengage, because you have Cassie to re-engage in that 4v4. Uh, as you mentioned, then play that split push out, the 4-1 split push, for the entirety of the game, especially after having the early gold that you had on Zed. I feel it was really a strategic misplay here by Fnatic. Yeah, I definitely think that we can say that they strategically fell down. They got all this gold and they didn't really know what to do with it. If we bring it back to pick bands, that is something to point out. 
also after one of their one team fights they ran mid lane against the wave clear of an Azir still up with ultimate instead of denying vision baiting Baron because with these split push comps it's one to establish vision for yourself but if you don't take it away from the enemy they don't have to make any bad choices and every single time SKT make good choices they're going to win the game. And this is actually the first time where I see Huni struggle a bit or being a little bit indecisive going for the top lane and getting ganked by three people and then the second time when he actually waits with his ultimate to trigger on bang. Um, that's actually something you don't see so often from Huni and I think that maybe when they had the power spikes to level up on Febivin and uh, losing this team fight, that must have hurt really hard. And I think the game could have been a little bit different if Febivin actually got all his bursts through in this team fight, but didn't happen. Fake had played it really, really incredibly well. And yeah, next game coming up soon, and I'm yeah. just looking forward to it so much. An element of underperforming there from Huni on the Cassiopeia. Now looking forward to the next game. Again, we swap sides. So this is the side that Fnatic did get their win on with the Urgot Steelback be, uh, being much more of a threat there. You know, SKT banning it both times on blue side. Are they going to just throw a ban at it this time on red? I think the Maokai is actually coming into fruition as to one of the premier picks for this matchup. Fnatic has yet to play it, but they can play it. You know, it's not the style of Huni, but they should definitely consider it or at least take it away from Marin. The, the Maokai, what it does is if you pick any dives, all that he has to do, save the Twisted Advance when anybody dives, hook onto that target and they're instantly dead. The damage is neglected and it makes it very difficult to pull off any 5v5 compositions that include assassins. Yeah, I definitely think that you have to look at the Maokai. The other one is the Alistair. We keep talking about it. Wolf has the tendency to roam off on him by himself and if he's on Alistair, he just has so much ability to deny being able to be killed. That's an 80% damage reduction. I think it's also better for him in the lane matchup. So I think that is the second one they'll deny along with the Malka. And sometimes what we see from Wolf is that he's in a position where he actually gets caught out and it's really, really hard with Alistar because you have this ambivalence between getting caught out and then needing to pop your ultimate or actually baiting somebody in because if you start committing an Alistar and he pops his ultimate, you get really fast in the situation where you overcommit and Fnatic is just so strong and turning those fights around where you think right now we have then Huni TPs behind they get slaughtered. Say, so let's return to the top lane or continue the top lane discussion here. SKT back on your screen, still, still working out what they're going to do here in this fourth game. But you know, again, Huni underwhelming on Cassiopeia slightly, but also being in that two v one, not having the opportunity to make as many plays around the map because the teleport, the teleports weren't there. And I think that that is a big element here for Fnatic coming to this next game is trying to put him in the position to affect other lanes where Febivin could not. Yeah, that's definitely a point. When you lane swap like that, you don't get the brawls that you're looking for. We keep talking about the 3v3, the 4v4. If you lane swap, it's going to be a controlled game, and that is really where SKT shines. So I expect them to go back to a 1v1. I think a cool thing about this draft was that in the previous games, SKT was banning the Cassiopeia. And they're thinking, okay, we struggle against it in the group stages. Let's keep banning it. And then they think, oh, well, we're going to have to make a sacrifice and commit to getting rid of one of our bans. Let's do Cassiopeia. Get rid of the band that we've been doing all this time and now they see they can play against it it's not as strong as they figured especially in the top lane Fabivin is favoring the assassin so now SKT has one band that is freed up for them I'm curious to see what they're going to do with it or if they even ban a LeBlanc seeing as how they're purple side now yeah I, def I feel like in the pick and ban they could have also let the Cassiopeia with the Alistar just to have the flex pick because they play Cassiopeia in the top and in the mid lane and maybe opening up some strategic diversity at that point. All right, well, we'll see after the break. Don't touch that browser. SKT are one game away from securing their spot in the MSF, MSI Finals. We'll see if they can get it done in Game 4 versus Fnatic. We'll be right back. The first time that this iteration of SK Telecom with Faker has ever lost a game to a Western team. There's the death mark coming in. Really? It's removed. It's yeah! removed. Oh, nice. Fuck it, nice. Woo! That's a shutdown from Bang. SKT with a great start to the fight. Double kill for Bang. His petrifying gaze does nothing. Solar Flare comes down, but it's three versus four. And the true shot barrage tags two. Rain over gets a small heal as he tries to get away. And Faker at 5 2 5 takes the series 2 1. 